Well, thanks a lot, Hanu, for this uh, very good uh, presentation, <laughs> introduction. Uh, thanks. B before beginning, I would like to also thanks a lot uh, the RCC, of course, and everybody to be here, and to allow me to do this presentation uh, of my work. So I have also to thank uh, two friends and French colleagues that were former uh, fellows uh, here. Uh, that uh, are Céline Pessy and uh, Marin Coudreau. Uh, and Céline was here last year, and uh, it's because of them that I'm here today, because without them, I would not uh, uh, have the... Yeah, uh, I, I discovered the RCC because of them, or thanks to them. Now, uh, so here is the plan of my talk. I have decided to give you an overview of my work and not to enter in the details. Uh, it's a choice, I don't know if it is a good one, but uh, let's see, we will see. Uh, first, I will begin with a little introduction uh, which is not mandatory, but uh, that could be important uh, to some of you. Uh, it is called, I call that the starting points. Uh, it's, um, it's not about history, but uh, about one, of, one aspect of the present uh, situation of uh, the world, that is what we call the uh, opening of biogeochemical cycles. And uh, if you remember two weeks ago, uh, at the presentation of Nandita, uh, Helmut Trischler have said that uh, historians uh, have uh, ha are always uh, Rowing or thinking about the present when, when they are doing history, and uh, it's my case, uh, because I have begun my PhD rowing about that situation that is the opening of biogeochemical cycles. Uh, okay, then uh, I will present my subjects through um, a few research questions. Uh, and uh, so, how did, we, how did we get there? And Precisely, how and why was the agricultural recycling of organic waste stopped in the case of the area of Paris in the second half of the 20th century? Uh, and I hope that after these starting points, you will see the links between uh, that question and uh, the opening of biogeochemical cycles. And to finish, uh, I will talk about the... I will give you two kinds of overview of my results uh, about uh, two objects. To the first one is the rise and fall of uh, industrial composting of bio-waste industry in the area of Paris after the Second World War. And uh, the other is the long and slow resistance and decline of sewage farming in uh, also uh, the case of the area of Paris. I'd be quicker for the second because, uh, and there is other objects that I will do not uh, deploy here. Okay, so now uh, first uh, the starting points. Uh, that is the opening of biogeochemical cycles. Uh, what is that stuff? I think that uh, everybody uh, here has seen uh, that kind of diagrams. Uh, which uh, has been produced by international researchers uh, in environmental sciences. So it describes and wants to show the planetary boundaries, that is to say the natural limits that humankind should not exceed or overcome in order to keep a living planet for human people and uh, the rest of nature. Uh, and at that time, so it was uh, in uh, 19, uh, no, sorry, in 2015. Uh, we can see something that is uh, that is that is uh, that is what uh, that is in red here. Uh, you can't see you because we are you are too. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's the opening of biogeochemical flow, the one of the phosphorus and the nitrogen uh, flows. So. Uh, 
And we can read that uh, about that both elements, so nitrogen and phosphorus, we are, uh, we are, we are in a situation uh, that is beyond zone of uncertainty. Uh, but what is a bit strange is that we do not hear a lot about that kind of uh, subject. Uh, in the media, in the political field, uh, of course, and uh, so it seems to be something quite growing because we are not in the green zone, we are not in the yellow, but we are in the red uh, situation. And uh, I have, I, fa I have, I had the impression that uh, when I began my PhD, nobody is talking about that. We are talking about that, but. We are talking about climate change uh, a lot, but not about uh, that uh, situation too. Uh, so that diagram is good, but uh, you know it's a kind of scientific abstraction, and we c we have we can have some difficulties to perceive what it's behind that kind of diagram. Uh, that's why I will do uh, first a reminder to everybody. Uh, so I try to be quick. Uh, so, <laughs> in the case, uh, in order to understand uh, that situation, uh, <laughs> we have to think about uh, the lunch time. <laughs> to make it very short, um, I have all opening of biogeochemical cycles, I have to see, uh, yeah, so the nitrogen and phosphorus one, but also most of other, calcium, potash, magnesium, uh, is the result of, uh, I am lost in my, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> is the result of most of the meals that are taken in the 20th century, almost everywhere on the planet. But do not stop to eat, of course. Do not feel gu gu guilty to eat. Uh, it's not a good idea. But to make it a little less short, uh, the opening of biogenical cycles is due to the way industrial societies are producing their food and manage the waste that uh, results from their meals. Uh, so organic bio-waste and human excreta, that is to say, pee and poo. Uh, OBC, no, so organic, no, opening of biogenical geochemical cycles is the result of the entire food system considered in a very broad way from agricultural inputs, so the fertilizer, to the management of food waste by waste, pee and poo. But do not stop to pee and poo, <laughs> otherwise we, you would be, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the problem is a systemic problem that deals with the entire food system from the food. fertilizer production before and, okay, uh, before the meal, you have, uh, in the industrial world of today, we have the fertilizer, fertilizer industry, the industrial uh, industry of fertilizer, uh, of uh, synthetic nitrogen and of phosphorus that came from uh, extractivism that we, used, we are using in our fields. Uh, for, yeah, I am lost again. Yeah, so I will first give you a quick overview of the nitrogen production case first. Oh, no, so <laughs> there is something that is uh, okay. Uh, yeah, first, so the, the nitrogen production case, uh, we have uh, industrial companies that we, it's, we produce uh, nitrogen, fertilizer, synthetic fertilizer nitrogen with that kind of plants so it's, it is one uh, in the United States, but we have other kind of uh, the, that plants everywhere in the world, in Europe and in France, of course. Uh, and uh, the problem of that industry is that they are resulting in a huge uh, consumption of energy in order to produce uh, the fertilizer and so of uh, CO2 emissions in the air. And uh, also there is a lot of diverse pollutions and uh, the most important thing is that we overconsume. Uh, it's uh, there is an overconsume of uh, fertilizer produced by that industry that results in the in huge destructions of soils, of water reserve, of river and oceans. And sometimes uh, that industry causes huge accidents 
uh, I put uh, accidents uh, in quotes, uh, like this one in, uh, if you remember, in Beirut in three years ago in the summer. Uh, so uh, I say uh, when industrial production and transplantation of industrial nitrogen fertilizer have some side effects or another kind of illustration of the opening of nitrogen cycle that happens sometimes, uh, by the way. And in France, uh, when I was a young boy, the same kind of events uh, have happened in Toulouse. Uh, and uh, that was something that struck me because uh, struck me a lot because I used to live in a little city near Toulouse and I have family uh, there. Uh, so I not, uh, yeah, I do not uh, like a lot of uh, that kind of industry and for instance with compost you do not have <laughs> that kind of accidents uh, but, so you have also before the meal the industry of phosphorus fertilizer so in that case uh, here is the way we are producing uh, that kind of fertilizer so it's uh, we, we, we keep it from the earth in a mineral deposit of uh, that sustenance in rocks. So for instance, here it's a mine in Morocco. Uh, and in Europe, the problem is that we are all depending on that kind of mines that are, that are in Morocco or in the United States or in Russia or in China, because we do not have phosphorus at all. And uh, also this production is, uh, commi uh, is committing uh, huge uh, des destruction and pollution and stuff like that. And the problem with that is that we will going to uh, reach the peak of production of phosphorus in a few days, in a few, not days, but uh, years and decades. And uh, we will have problems with the with scarcity of uh, phosphorus. So then it was uh, before, uh, all that is before the field. And then uh, you have what you will after the meal. So after the meal, we have uh, the organic bi-waste uh, case. So for instance, here in the case of the metropolitan area of Paris, and in the metropolitan area of Paris for the, the, the major quantity of the organic waste, we are uh, burning them in that kind of plants. Uh, so destruction and deletion in air with production of CO2 of organic waste in the Paris area in the 20s. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, so again with pollution and uh, emission of pollutants and of course of CO2. And for to finish, the, after the meal we have also the human waste case, so pee and poo. And for that we have today that kind of plants that are the sewage treatment plants. Uh, that result of uh, the acts that we are doing every day by uh, uh, sending our excreta in uh, the water and in sewage system. And sometimes, again, uh, there is some accidents. So for, for instance, it was in that, uh, in that plant in Paris, near Paris, in some uh, uh, 2019, uh, so one of the building have burn, uh, burned, sorry, and uh, so in that case we you have a huge release of uh, wastewater in the river, and so it can happen a huge destruction of the river uh, like this. So. This is uh, what is behind the opening of biogeochemical cycles and the red situation we are all over the planet. Okay, so uh, that was uh, my starting point four, five years ago before starting my uh, PhD. And uh, I am lost again, so I will sum up. Uh, all around the world, industrial food production uh, requires huge quantities of industrial fertilizer whose production is a cause in itself of uh, large pollutions and destructions. Then in France and in other industrial countries, so almost everywhere now, modern industrial management of organic matter that results from the food system tends to entirely uh, destroy them to, or to make them physically disappear through uh, incineration for solid waste, so or garbage, and, or, or, sorry, dilution in water river, oceans, and air for human waste. 
both that production of fertilizer and management system of organic waste, so are parts of the industrial food system, are resulting in uh, a huge wastage of resources, then a massive, ma massive and diverse pollution, uh, the risk and the certainty of uh, future shortages, especially in the case of phosphorus in the next decades, and in summary, so the uh, opening of biogeochemical cycles and the exceeding of global limits that should be uh, respected to keep a safe space, space for humanity. And it's also what there is uh, 100, uh, no, one, no, not 100, uh, one, uh, yeah, yeah, 150 years ago, an old guy called the metabolic rift, that guy. And uh, this is the present situation uh, that, in order to understand it, lead me to make history. So, first part, it's done. So now, the research question. Uh, so I hope that this reminder uh, is useful to some of you. And I can begin to talk about my specific uh, apprehension or understanding of this situation with an historical point of view. So the opening of biogeochemical cycles has, of course, a history. It's not natural. It's, we can say, a human, but I do prefer say that it's an industrial production. Uh, yeah, I'm again, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for instance, uh, and due to previous and natural scarcity situation of energetic and mineral resource in the past, a lot of pre-industrial and early industrial societies until mid of the 20th, 20th century, so it's quite recent, uh, have tried and managed not to open but to close uh, biogeochemical cycles. This was the case, for instance, uh, in the USA, in China, in Japan, in Germany, and of course in uh, the capital of 19th century, to quote uh, Walter Benjamin, uh, and uh, the city of Paris in France. And in all these different cases, uh, organic waste were used in agricultural lands in order to get natural fertilizer and to produce food. Uh, there was a relatively, because it was not perfect, closed loop between rural and uh, cities, rural areas and cities, and biogeochemical cycles were relatively, again, preserved. Uh, okay, so again, <laughs> yeah. And so we have, uh, this has been uh, studied and told by some urban, environmental, and technical historians, such as, for instance, uh, Joel Thor in the United States in the 70s about the American case. Uh, then also there is also that uh, book, no, that little article from uh, Donald Worcester, another American historian, but that have, uh, who have uh, studied uh, the Chinese case, that is a, a big case of uh, human waste recycling in history. And then in France, uh, there is my supervisor, that is Sabine Barle, uh, who wrote that uh, book, uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the title can be traduced in English, The Invention of Waste, that is to say that waste in a recent, uh, is our waste are a recent, or is a recent production of modern societies, because uh, before, in a quite uh, recent past, they do not exist because societies used to use every kind of residues, and especially organic ones, in order to produce uh, and to reproduce the fertility of soil and food, by the way. But the problem, no, it's not a problem, but uh, even with these works uh, that are very, very important, we still do, not ha we still do have some lacks in the, our comprehension of the history of waste management because uh, technological history has been for so long uh, focused on the innovations and not on the techniques that are in use uh, in a period of time. And uh, it's not really true for that three uh, works uh, that I mentioned here, but it's still the general case. Uh, something that is sure, that is today, we, we know more about um, the history of new technological development, development in order to uh, produce food and to manage waste, but uh, 
for, for instance, so industrial fertilizer industry and the development of industrial agriculture, uh, incineration plants and uh, sewage treatment plants. So that history is very is, it's known, but we do not have the history of how the old techniques of recycling. Uh, in agriculture, for instance, uh, have resisted and then disappear or being being largely uh, marginali marginalized. So, and so recently, uh, in that article of Donald Worcester, so this one I mentioned, uh, we have that two sentences that I take very seriously, and I encourage you to take it very seriously too. Uh, as we face global ecological limits, including limits on how much human waste the earth can bear, those of us in the West and now everywhere are forced to ask what we can learn from the past experience in or of other and from practice that we may have abandoned long ago, and uh, where we might recover those discord practice and make them useful again. The second sentence, sorry for my English, I... Uh, it's uh, difficult for me to <laughs> read it, but I try. Fellow historians, don't turn away from this uh, tangled story of bodies, nutrients, and resources. Don't turn up your nose and at the stench that once permitted fields and dwellings, soiling clothing and hands, and making stomachs heave. Don't run away from the full odor that still gather around of our cities and farms. Don't ignore the centrality of agriculture to our history of living within the natural world. Uh, and so my research question then after that, all agricultural techniques for urban organic waste have disappeared or been largely marginalized until nowadays. What were in the field of organic waste the roads not taken by the technological development? What is the specific trajectory of the hidden side of the technological volume in the case of organic waste treatment and agricultural fertilization? Uh, so, yeah, and uh, all that in order to address and imagine, in imagine better solutions for present and future by getting inspired by the, la by the past because as Helmut uh, Trischler have written with Russ uh, Oldenzil, uh, all, technology, all, all technologies became sustainable, uh, yeah. So, okay. Quick now, uh, my study area and period, it's the Parisian area from the 40s to the 90s. It's the period of an important economic growth and of modernization in which, uh, at the level of the urban and rural areas of the capital region of France, the dominant uh, agricultural recycling system was overtaken and replaced by a system largely oriented toward, towards incineration and destruction. And at the end, it is the period of the consolidation of the metabolic rift in France, and you know it is uh, the period also of the great acceleration and uh, okay, uh, that leads to, to the overpassing of planetary boundaries. And the aims of the rest of the talk is to show that this transition to destruction was not the only one possible during the second part of the 20th century, and on the contrary, that for material, material recuperation uh, through industrial composting, for garbage and sea watch farms for human waste, for instance, because there is other, other again, other, other way. Uh, so, yeah, beyond a range of other recycling solutions, were also roads that could have been uh, taken and defended or reinforced. <coughs> And give, so the, the second aim is to give in brief uh, some examples of the causes that made uh, these sustainable trajectories fail. And uh, I will quickly detail uh, the prevalence of the energetic considerations over all the other environmental problems, especially after the oil crisis of the 70s. So now, uh, the rise and fall of the organic and agricultural treatment of household waste, household waste in the Paris area for, from the 40s to the 80s. So, uh, I, am, uh, I am, I am, I am, yeah. Just before the Second World War in Paris, 
we have that kind of plants that where uh, plants were in one part uh, we were burning the garbage, but in another part we were making a kind of compost. Uh, okay, so the garbage for the parts that were transformed into compost uh, were um, transformed in that kind of uh, plants and then transport by uh, rail or by boats on the sea, on the river, and then uh, they were ca carried to the, to the, to the lands uh, in order to fertilize uh, the land. So it was the case, uh, it, this is uh, an overview of uh, the closed loop of four by waste in uh, the 30s, just before the war. And at this time, in the 30s, transition to destruction was already in motion. Uh, but the agricultural recycling system was already, uh, yeah, uh, and the agricultural recycling system was already losing ground against uh, the incineration. And to say that, I can refer to a famous article of uh, Martin Melosi and uh, about the incineration and on the work of Sabine Barr, my supervisor, for the case of Paris. And my object is to see how that relatively closed system has totally disappear by looking at, uh, at it and not at looking at the incineration uh, way. It's okay? So then, uh, we have during the 40s a big event, a huge event, maybe the worst in history until now, that is the World War II. And at this time, we had in France, of course, and due to many reasons related to war, a huge, uh, no, huge shortages in uh, the new synthetic uh, fertilizer production. So during the few decades before the war, the, the war is there, and the, during the few decades before, um, uh, French agriculture uh, has begun to rely more and more on these new chemical inputs. And so with the war, suddenly all that uh, new system has disappeared because of uh, the scarcity due to the war. And uh, the, so the situation of withdrawal, withdrawal was terrible. And so in order to replace this new lost, uh, this, uh, lost fertilizer, uh, there is an important development uh, in time of war of organic recycling uh, for urban waste. Uh, I have all a chapter that is talking about that in my dissertation. And this is, has happened maybe in every country uh, during the Second World War but especially in France because of the uh, situation that uh, was one of the worst. Okay, and uh, so here are some pictures. Uh, so this was a landfill uh, near Paris, just near Paris, uh, that was turned into a field uh, in order to produce food. And this is a book uh, of uh, an agronomist uh, from the state that explained to farmer how to replace uh, synthetic fertilizer by using urban waste as fertilizer. And then, uh, after the Second World War, uh, we have something that wasn't expected at all for me, and uh, yeah, it is that after the war, the sudden, uh, there is a sudden revival of the recycling industry. Uh, so, what I have discovered and what I want to show is that after the war, this renewal of uh, recycling system, that movement that we are doing the war, have you know, survived the war and uh, continue after it. So, why uh, this has to be linked with uh, a, a kind of first alert about, uh, the, about the overpassing of uh, the limits, the natural limits of the Earth, of planetary limits. Uh, in France and in the world, the great, the great concern uh, at the time, that is still valid today, is uh, are those that have to do with the soils and their fertility. And maybe, uh, so Céline Pessy last year have talked about that. And in France, we have, uh, we have a, a movement that is the Humus Crusade, and uh, that try to, uh, to, 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 to develop and to defend uh, the organic uh, recycling of, uh, and organic agriculture. 
And we have, for instance, the translation of the book uh, Nandita told us uh, two weeks ago, uh, the book of William Vogt. Uh, and uh, so there is so that humus crusade that gather agronomists, doctors, and earth engineers, <coughs> and they all were explicitly connected with the aim of recycling waste uh, in uh, order not to lose the condition of fertility that are the closed loop between uh, urban and rural area. For instance. We have that research group uh, that is the that is the, the group de Roche, international de recherche sur les ordures ménagères, or in English, the international research group on refuse disposal. It's a worldwide uh, movement, and the French committee of that group. Uh, so this is a, a prospectus of uh, the French committee of that movement. Uh, explicitly, so defend uh, the use in uh, agriculture of urban waste and especially of garbage and domestic waste. And so then after that, uh, we had an important movement of development of industrial composting of bio-waste uh, in France and especially in the Parisian area. I have documenting that I am I am using, I am documenting that uh, in a chapter, and uh, I have done that in an article. So here is a plan uh, that is written by uh, the regional and metropolitan authorities of the area of Paris in the 60s that plan the development of um, a lot of uh, composting plants in the area of Paris. Uh, this is a map of the use of the Parisian uh, garbage in the rural area near uh, around Paris, again in the 60s, and uh, it's a photograph of one of the first uh, of the new composting plants that have been created in the 60s uh, near uh, the city of Paris. And it is a success because uh, in uh, only 10 years, from 1963 to 1973, there is about 20 composting plants that have been uh, built in the surroundings of Paris. And so there is a German agronomist, I am not able to tell his name, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's uh, someone very known in the world of composting uh, in Germany and uh, worldwide. Uh, so at the time, it, he was an observer for the European Commission, and he resumed the, uh, yeah, the, the French movement at the end of the 70s. And so he say, uh, the French compost industry, uh, which was largely built up in, the, in its present technical form after the Second World War, was able to fall back on an awareness of the value of organic soil improvers, which had never quite died out to a far greater extent than could uh, the United Kingdom and the Federal Republic of Germany, for instance, where the undeniable advantages of mineral fertilization for plant nutrition have been overestimated to the detriment of soil nutrition. Practice in France, in many respects, contradicts a number of, the of theories put forward by observers of the compost industry, First of all, there is a theory that composting cannot take place in conurbation. In France, the overwhelming proportion of compost production takes place in the Paris area. So uh, that is uh, the rise, so the rise movement of the composting industry in the 60s and at the beginning of the 70s in the Paris area. But then, quickly, uh, it failed and it uh, disappeared. So the, the, the last part of my talk about that is uh, that we have uh, the end of, um, because of uh, a combination of factors uh, that leads so to a quick fade of that recycling industry. Uh, so I can't enter into the detail because it's too long and there is too many, but uh, there is a lot of factors so that uh, destroy that uh, enterprise. And the most, maybe the most, one of the most important factors uh, of eviction of that composting, composting industry uh, the, I want to present is the energetic bias. Uh, 
I think that from the 70s to nowadays, uh, that energetic bias is locking the waste management in uh, the wrong uh, trajectory of destruction. Uh, that energetic bias, so it's just following uh, the oil shocks uh, of the 70s and the crisis that goes with. And uh, because that crisis has reinforced a lot the incineration technologies with a lot of policies in Europe and in France in order to foster the development of new green energy resources and the so-called so energy recovery. Uh, so after having built all that composting plants in the area of Paris, all the even investments have in a few months changed their uh, direction toward incineration in order to recover calories or to produce electricity. Uh, so here again there is some illustration of that in the case, in the specific case of France. Uh, of course there is all, uh, there is other factors that I can explain, uh, that can explain to, to ex that, I, that I have to mention to explain the decline of composting industry, uh, add the pro proliferation of plastics in garbage, but you know they are linked because plastics it's uh, from petroleum and petroleum it's very, it can burn and produce a lot of calories, so the incineration industry love plastic in garbage uh, in order to recover energy. So there is a lot of uh, different factors that are, that are all, all intertwined. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, and something that is quite important also uh, here ah, is in that slide. Uh, it is the fact that um, the oil shock, for instance, allowed uh, the industry of incineration to disrupt the original aim of the French modern law on waste management that date from uh, 19, uh, 1970, 1975. So it's the first text, uh, no, the first version of the law was uh, written before the first oil shock, so before uh, 1973. And after, uh, uh, during the discussion of the law in the French uh, parliamentary, as the French assembly, uh, the, 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 the French Commission of Trade and Industry have uh, do a little uh, modification of the text, of the version of the text, saying that, for instance, it's uh, written here, Reporter, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, the bill on the elimination of waste and the recovery of material demonstrates that the protection of natural balances and economic development are not necessarily incompatible. They are, on the contrary, very often complementary if certain conditions, such as the fight against waste through the recovery materials. So that was the previous and the original version. And then the committee has added energy become an element of a true awareness of, uh, for uh, humanity, of humanity. And the problem with this uh, addition of energy to the uh, material recovery is that we only can recover energy from material if we destroy the material. So we can have both. We have to destroy to have energy. So that law that uh, is uh, maybe the most important law in the field of waste management in France in the 70s was uh, totally, you know, no, not totally, but <laughs> uh, perversed, uh, yeah, uh, by that kind of uh, uh, goal that, that are, that are, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm too long. <laughs> uh, I can continue very quick uh, to do, yeah, so I am working working on uh, garbage and solid waste. I am also working on human waste. And for human waste, we have the urine and excrement uh, in itself, but we have also the wastewaters. And for the case, in the case of the area of Paris, uh, after, during the, all the 20th century, we had uh, the recycling again uh, of uh, that wastewater in field and in agriculture. Uh, so we had, uh, we had, no, yeah, 
uh, sewage formings. So here uh, there is uh, the, the situation at the beginning of the 20th century. So you have Paris and then a big uh, sewage... Uh, sewage what? Uh, yeah. Uh, pipe? Pipe. Pipeline, yeah. Uh, of 30 kilometers, thanks a lot, that uh, goes to um, lands, uh, agricultural lands, that were fertilized by uh, human waste. And uh, as for solid waste, I tried to retrace how this kind of technological way to recycle the human excreta has uh, disappeared. Uh, so here the story is not the one of a revival, then a decline, but the one of a long resistance of uh, um, technologies that is a mix of uh, traditional and industrial way to recycle, to recycling human waste. Uh, so I have some picture of this. Uh, so all the, that the picture are from the 50s. Oh, no. <laughs> and um, there is again a lot of different factors uh, that should be considered in order to understand the disappearance of sewage farming. So there is of course the urban sprawl, uh, the, yeah, the urban sprawl, yeah, spreading uh, on farmland, uh, the growing uh, new urban industrial pollutions of uh, wastewaters with metals and with other residues uh, or the novel entities, for instance, uh, of pollutants. Uh, there is also new and uh, higher health requirements or cultural changes in the way modern societies accept human organic fertilization. Uh, there is a change in uh, regional agriculture, of course, uh, with the weakening of uh, short food supply chain chains replaced by international secrets that have uh, per disturbed a lot that kind of uh, farm system. And again, the energetic bias uh, with the production of biogas. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah. Again, the signs of resistance and persistence of that old technique uh, have to be explored and exposed. And as a conclusion, okay, I have, I have that, okay, and uh, so. As a conclusion, only in the case of uh, solid waste. So in the domain of organic waste management during the first part of the 20th century, material and form recycling, uh, and form recycling of domestic and human waste in the, uh, in the area of Paris did resist. Notably in the case of garbage in the 50s and in the 60s after the sudden shock of the World War II, that kind of way uh, to treat these organic residues were able to improve through the way of industrial composting. That technology managed to uh, appear as a modern one and connected to the emerging criticism, emerging criticism of chemical fertilizer and the need of soil to get organic material in order to be maintained. The agricultural, agricultural recycling of waste has had some success. And after a second shock, the oil crisis of the 70s, but there is, again, a lot of other factors, the equi equilibrium between both techniques uh, of destruction and of recycling suddenly vanished. Incineration has been encouraged at a national level, and on the contrary, composting has been uh, less valued. Uh, so it is one of the major factors between uh, all the other and connected factor of the technological trajectory that I didn't mention. So that case that caused this disappearance of natural recycling of organic waste, and if today no, uh, yeah, it's too long. But uh, the hierarchy of waste treatment methods place the material recycling before the energetic production, the energy the energy production. We are still stuck in this heritage, in heritage, and the current management of waste orientation remain largely oriented by this energy priority inherited from the 70s, uh, okay. And to conclude and to finish, uh, uh, I want also to um, make you uh, discover the French program I am working with uh, of research, a program of research that is called OCAPI, and that is working on, uh, on urine diversion, diversion 
in order to make white low-tech uh, fertilizer from uh, human waste. Uh, so it's, it uh, has several uh, aspects and uh, look at all the dimensions uh, that we need to, to have in mind in order to, to address uh, that kind of problem. And uh, yeah, the, the goal of that, um, of that program is to, 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 to look for new and old technologies in order to reintroduce some circularity uh, in the human and organic waste management system in France and uh, in other places. So that's, uh, yeah, okay, it's to, to have a, uh, also a good, uh, a good point to finish. <laughs> well, that's